yet another wild Tuesday night of college hoops. We're going to start it in the Big 12, arguably the best conference right now in the country, in a top 10 matchup, 7th ranked Kansas State, taking on 8th ranked Kansas. These two teams played two weeks ago. Kansas State came out on top by one in overtime. This time around, a different story. Kansas comes away with a 90-78 win. Tio, let's start with you. What was the biggest difference in this game? Well, Kansas is three-point shooting in the first half where they hit nine. And whenever they're moving the ball and everything's popping and they're knocking down shots and different guys, Dewan Harris, I've been singing his praises all year. I think he's one of the most underrated pure point guards in the country. I feel like I've said that. I'm on repeat. That's okay. He's that good. I like him a lot. But you can't get down 10 points at Fog Allen. Yeah. Just not, you're not going to win because that is the most difficult place in the country to play. I said it. That's the one. Everybody can argue with me. The amp, the dunk, doesn't matter. Cameron Indoor, nope. Carolina, nope. Kansas. That is the toughest place to play in all of college basketball. I know TCU won here recently, but you cannot get down 10 to 15 points against Kansas at their place. It's insanely difficult. And when Dewan Harris is hitting shots, I don't know how you guard KU. I agree. Um, they had McCuller and Dewan Harris. They play if, if those guys can score in double digits, Kansas is going to be hard to beat. Grady Dick played well. Didn't have a great game shooting wise, but you know, if they can get help from other guys, as we said, Kansas is a really good team. And tonight they handled a kind of upstart Kansas State team pretty easily. I mean, at Kansas State, I, I don't know why I, even, I thought Kansas State may have a chance, but when I really look back at it, at Kansas State, down the stretch, it was a one possession game. Self calls that timeout for them to go up 40 hits to three. So, um, Kansas is ready for him, and uh, Bill Self's going to figure it out. He's not, he's not going to keep losing very long, and tonight was kind of an example of that. Yeah, you can't not bet. You can't bet against Bill Self, that is. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, too. I thought Kansas from the tip just came out and just kept their foot on the gas pedal. Put up 49 points in the first half. Jalen Wilson had 16 in the first half. Uh, defensively, the rotations were crisp. They were challenged at the rim. Uh, overall, getting it done on both sides of the ball. Tio, how important is it? Has Kansas learned from losing three of its last four that they have to get off to a good start in order to be successful? Yeah, I, that's obviously what you want every game, right? But I, I, I want to say, too, I, I look at their schedule. That that loss at Kansas State, at Manhappy, as Jerome Tang likes to call it, like <laughs> I, I think that lost them, too. That lost them two games because it was such an emotional expenditure game. They lose close. They think they're supposed to win. Ismail Masood's out of bounds when he throws it in. There's a mm -hmm. lot going on. And then you play a TCU team at home who is speed on speed. So if you're doubting yourself at all, you better turn it around in a hurry. And then just because it's the Big 12, you have to play Baylor two days later. So <laughs> you look at those three games in a row, it's brutal. And I think they're not Megan, bad losses. Not, but not a single bad loss. No. That's the crazy part. And I think I, I was with you in uh, Psycho T last week. And I was like, hey, if you're going to buy low, if you're going to buy low, right now is the time to buy Kansas because they need this week off. And they're going to show up at Kentucky refreshed. They're going to have a day off. Bill Self might even let them take a nap. Who knows? And they're going to show <laughs> up at Kentucky and they're going to, they're going to play really well, really refreshed. And now back at Fog Allen, obviously, you know, it's a snowball effect. And when do you not want to play well? Or if you're going to, you know, it's ebbs and flows in the, in the college basketball season. The best time to kind of regear things is at the end of January. So you can start coasting towards conference tournament time. I mean, I agree. I mean, till you played right, you dropped three games in a row. You're sitting up a little more in that chair. You're listening mm -hmm. a little harder to coach. You're playing, you know, you're practicing a little harder. So I think that's what happened to Kansas. This might go down maybe as a defining stretch for them to kind of teach them a lesson. Hey, look, you can be beat on any day. The Big 12 is on any given night. And uh, ever since kind of one of that losing streak, they've been playing with a different little edge, kind of like they got a little chip on their shoulder. So I like this Kansas team that uh, we're seeing right now. I want to take a second and flip it over to the Kansas State side, who had 13 turnovers. Kansas was able to capitalize off it with 21 points off the turnovers. What did this game say to you about Kansas State, John? It, it, they're, they're here. I mean, going into Fog Island, they just played them a couple of weeks ago, tough loss, um, playing a Big 12. top Towards the top of the Big 12, they're here to stay. They're, they're going to be competitive, and uh, – it's going to be fun down the stretch to see if they can sustain and handle that prosperity of them being a team with a target on their back. Um, Cause I mean, in the big, I mean, the Texas tech game was crazy. I turned it off. 
you know, and, and I kind of look back on and they're storming the court. So it could be any given night, but I think this Kansas State team has shown enough for us to say, hey, look, we're going to be seeing them towards the end. I think the Big 12 Conference Championship is, is going to be a lot of fun. You look at you look at a couple things too. I mean, they tied in the second half. Both teams scored forty one in the second half, so mm-hmm. not a whole lot of defense for either party. I, I, I think that's a big thing. Rebounding wise, they only down two at Kansas's place, and you're always going to get a foul here or there that make you scratch your head a little bit when you play a fog Allen. They were still able to compete, at least regroup and compete for the full forty minutes after being down twelve at halftime. It, it, it's a team with definite talent. Keontae Keontae Johnson has been as good as advertised, and quite frankly, guys, he's been better. Uh, Marcus Noel had an off shooting night, five of 18. How yeah, often is he going to do that? I, I don't foresee that happening all that often. He didn't play well in the first game against Kansas, largely due to Dewan Harris being the best defensive point guard in college basketball. But it's, it's one of those things. I don't think that those struggles are going to continue a lot because of how hard they play. They continue to compete the entire 40 minutes. And that second half told me something. Right, like they can still score with Kansas, who can really score. So Mm -hmm. it's going to continue. Don't be surprised you see these guys in the Big Twelve Finals. Right. It's crazy because you could say that about so many different teams. I know in the Big Twelve this season. (laughs) I mean, we're going to get into it a little more here, but just to give you some perspective, as you mentioned or alluded to earlier, To next two games for Kansas, they're at Iowa State, then home against Texas. So nothing is ever easy by any means.